Almost exactly two years ago, I released a video comparing the helmet mount and the chest mount for the GoPro Hero 7 Black. It's still to date my most viewed video, and frankly I was pretty harsh on the chest cam. Looking back at the end of the video, I left a note saying that I thought it was lacking in some areas. That I thought the chest mount added a certain intensity, but an attachment to fix the angle and maybe a gimbal for extra stabilization would go a long way as it seemed like whenever there was especially fast motion or any kind of tucking, the footage suffered greatly. And that was really the end of my use of the chest mount, as it wasn't mine at the time. I was borrowing it from my very good friend Dan, who's been in a few videos with me now. So after that experience, I really hadn't used it again since. That was until my amazing girlfriend gifted me a chest mount for Christmas. And, just this last week, I finally got around to using it. I decided to go up to Eldora Mountain on a weekday, for my first time at Eldora Mountain actually, I'll be touching on that in a future video. So I figured I'd give it a go, if the footage turned out to be a little off then I could easily switch to the head cam and we'd be all good. But I never switched back to it, I used the chest cam the whole day. There's just something about the chest mount that translates the moment better to film. Where a helmet cam can give an illusion that something is a little less steep or a little less fast than it really was in the moment or how it really felt in the moment, I think the chest mount does an excellent job of relaying to the viewer 
a similar intensity and speed to what the filmer felt themselves while they were making the video. That's not to say there's no downsides to using the chess cam. Unfortunately, there is still the tuck issue that's frankly kind of unavoidable. If you tuck, you're going to have bad footage. However, as far as stabilization, I had little to no issues. To be fair, I am using the GoPro Hero 7 Black. It does have an auto gimbal feature. So other older versions of the GoPro may actually need the gimbal. Uh, but I face no issues without a gimbal at all. As far as the angle, I just cranked it all the way back. Where before, I probably wasn't as far back as I could have been. And with this adjustment, I had almost no issues aside from tucking. The footage remained fairly viewable the whole way through. The last note is if you have anything at all on your jacket or near the camera that could be clicking or clacking near it, it will screw up the audio. The GoPro will pick up that instead of the skiing and distort the audio like crazy. I faced this with some of my footage. So just keep that in mind if you do end up using the chest mount to clear away anything and anything away from that GoPro. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this redux of my chest mount review. Uh, I think it's a little more thorough than the first one. Uh, I appreciate all the new subscribers as well. It's just awesome how many new people are coming to this channel. Um, I just love that I'm able to share really just what I like doing with you guys. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you want more skiing content. There'll be more coming out soon, hopefully. And hope you have a great one.